you would, would you please bow your heads? Father God Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, God, the lover of our soul and the blessed one who died for us. God, we worship you this morning before we ask for you to do anything. God, you are majestic. You are beautiful. You are wonderful. You are awesome and amazing. And God, now I ask that you would take the authority over my life and anoint my head with oil. God, let your will be done and your direction be taken in this moment. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Um, I will read you the text. I did pick Ruth chapter 1, 15 through 18, and it reads, Look, said Naomi, your sister-in-law is going back to her people and her gods. Go back with her. But Ruth replied, Don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. And where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me ever so severely if anything but death separates you and me. And when Naomi realized that Ruth was determined to go with her, she stopped urging her. The title of my text is A New Territory with God. And, of course, none of you would know this, but it was only four months ago that I lost a lot. Um, we talk about the Job experience, but there's also a Ruth experience. Um, God snatched many of many possessions that I thought were imperative to my life, and God had to birth in me this Ruth experience that where I go, or where you, I want you to go, I need you to go. What you want, what I want you to give up, I need you to give up for my name's sake. So going forward, Ruth was a settled woman. She had her husband, her land, her religious affiliation, and her security. She had become accustomed to a life that was comfortable for her. The only difference between Ruth and the other Moabite women was she had a heart and devotion towards her family and a commitment to them. This devotion was so strong that it would eventually change her livelihood and what she thought to be true about her own religion. I can imagine that after the passing of Ruth's husband, her outlook on that same life she had become so accustomed to changed forever. In the midst of her struggle, she had been introduced to Naomi's God, a God she had never met that she never, didn't know much about, but there was something about that God that made her follow <laughs> Naomi to this new land, a God that would bring her prosperity that she knew nothing about, a God that would bring her relationship that she knew nothing about. Ruth did not let the dead thing or situation in her life deter her from the destiny God placed before her. This blind step to follow Naomi would initiate and catapult Ruth's destiny with God. For it says in 1 Peter 1 and 8 that though you have not seen me, you love me. And even though you do not see me now, you believe in me and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy, for you are receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your soul. I can picture Ruth reassuring, excuse me, I can picture God reassuring Ruth with these words during her journey to this new land and territory. If you would use your imagination, picture Naomi as God and you, ministers of the gospel, as Ruth. As ministers, we must adapt a Ruth-like mentality when serving as God's messengers to God's people. We must declare to God that where you send me, I will go. What you tell me to preach, I will preach. Who you want me to help, I will help, and what you want me to give up, I will give up. This departure from flesh and self gains us the accessibility to God's glory and furthers the kingdom of God. We often claim the phrase dying to self, which means a rebuking or a turning away from our flesh and our selfishness. In this passage of Ruth, we see that she is dying to a thought process and a lifestyle that she has always known. As ministers, we have to do the same. We have to relinquish our control on what we believe God is doing in us, through us, and for us. Often we have mentalities and perceptions and thoughts of what God is going to take us here when God is saying, I need you to stay right here for a while. 
God's mystery and plan is far greater than what we can hope or ask for. There are times that in order to get to the next level with God and in ministry, he is try you have to let him birth something in you. You must declare some things over and dead in your life. Ask yourself what needs to die in you today. Moving to unknown and uncharted territories is scary but not impossible. And this is confirmed in Matthew 19, 26 when it says that all things are possible with God. Ruth understood that it's not about where you have been, but it's where you are going. She knew that the death of her husband, while tragic, was revealing to her things unseen. Ruth was being presented with the faith that Hebrews 11 and 1 speaks about, blind faith. And like Ruth, God is snatching some things from us that are hindering us. He is commanding those of us that have professed to be what excuse me, they have professed we want God's will to rise to the occasion. No longer will God continue to let the gifts he has given us collect dust on a shelf. If God has called you to missions, prepare yourself for the journey and let go of some fears that keep you grounded in one spot. If God has ordained you to pastor, do not get weary in well-doing, for in due season he will bless you with the congregation and the heart to serve in that capacity. If God has anointed you with prophetic power, be not dismayed, for your current struggle is perfecting you. And remember, Ruth had to be okay and content with something dying in her life prior to a new destiny and territory coming into view. Yeah. Ruth, on her journey with Naomi to this new city, had gotten a sweet taste of the Almighty through her communion with Naomi. The living God had changed her devotion, and the gods of the Moabites just wouldn't suffice any longer. If you find yourself changing, it is a good thing. You see and you start to realize that the way you used to worship just doesn't get you what you need anymore. Your prayer life and specific times of prayer just doesn't fill you and aid you in your release like it used to. Your understanding of God's word is shifting because it's forming new meanings that coincide with your current struggle. Believe that a new territory is coming your way that God is only prepping you for. Like Ruth, once again, we must not allow our current or old ways to cloud our openness to the move of God. Much like ourselves, the church, Big C, as a collective body has to be willing to move as well. We need to give up some doctrines that no longer work for the saving of souls in our churches. And we may need to modify some programs that, that no longer minister to the youth of, the day, of today because they are so much different than what we were when we were youth. And we should probably let go of some traditions that keep us bound and shackled to history. Ruth understood that a new dawn was approaching. The remnant of God in this day and age is fast approaching and you are either on board or not yes. she knew she knew that in order for my destiny to come about she needed to be willing to move blindly ministers of the gospel I encourage us to take this mindset walks of faith do not include nearsightedness to move in obedience and under the direction of God takes action that are often unknown to us yet that's the beauty of God's mystery because if we knew everything more than likely we wouldn't go uh, and as I take my seat, I can hear Ruth singing Bishop S. Morton's song to God in a sweet voice as she follows behind Naomi to this new territory. She would say, Lord, if I, if I find favor in your sight, Lord, please, Lord, please hear my cries. Hear my heart's cry. I am desperately waiting to be where you are. I will cross the hottest desert or the deepest valley or the highest mountain. I will travel near or far. God is for your glory. I will do anything just to see you, to behold you as my king. I want to be where you are. I have to be where you are. I need to be where you are, standing, dwelling in your presence. A new territory and a new people, a new anointing and 
and a new vital presentation of the gospel is what God is pulling out of this generation. God no longer wants us to depend on the ushers in the front doors of the church to be the doorkeepers, but he is calling for willing vessels poised with true worship to invite and compel others to enter into his presence. He is shifting denominational platforms and inconsistencies in order for the church, big C, as a whole, back down the aisle as the pure bride of Christ. He is calling us, each of us, out of, as ministers to live truthfully, holy, and unafraid of this world in order for youth and young adults of the church, little C, to regain access to his untainted glory. That will be revealed in us. So God, to God be the glory and walk into this new territory. Amen.